Paleota champs, now let's talk about the new CPUs coming this year and we're entering that sort of three month window for the 10th generation laptop parts. We're not talking the Ultrabooks, I'll talk about the Ultrabooks in a sec with the Tiger Lake CPUs which are CPUs coming at the end of the year. But we're talking about laptops like gaming laptops, you know, content creation, XPS 15, MacBook Pro, you know, Razors, Eros, those sort of laptops, you know, the 10th generation version of their CPUs are coming out. So the 45 watt part. So we're going to talk about what to expect. We're going to actually see some benchmarks of the 10th generation CPUs and discuss whether you should actually wait or not. Now, when it comes to the Ultrabook CPUs, we already have 10th generation CPUs with Ultrabooks with the Comet Lake and Ice Lake. There's going to be Tiger Lake at the end of the year. All we know about Tiger Lake is better graphics. So even an improvement on Ice Lake, they're going to be 10 nanometer a more refined process let's hope they get higher clocks and also hope they have a six core option because currently with the ice lake cpus you can only get quad core you have to get comet lake if you want the six cores and then when you get comet lake you don't get the good graphics so with ultrabooks they're safe to buy now that's going to be at the end of the year so let's talk about gaming laptops and content creation laptops my favorite kind of laptops if we have a look here at a chart that wccf have and by the way they had like a, a leaked screen i don't know if this is true or not this leaked screen but anyway it's talking about the 10th generation desktop parts now history has shown us that the cpus that go in the laptops sort of like mirror what goes in the desktops so as you'll see here we've got 10 core i9 and the i7s are eight cores but i was a little bit disappointed when i went to geekbench and i saw some scores for 10th generation laptop parts so these are supposedly the 10750h so this replaces the 9750h the i7 that goes in all the gaming laptops and content creation laptops and what it says there is six cores so on the desktop the i7 is eight cores and they're saying they're six cores on the laptop parts. I'll get into comparing the score to the i7 in a sec. But this was sort of like a surprise. I was expecting an eight core i7. I don't know the reasons why. Maybe it's been in. I don't know if they can do it. Or maybe there's two i9 versions. There's an eight core i9 and then there's a 10 core i9. Or maybe they go to i10 or something. I, I don't know. I'd like to know down there in the description. But I'll be very surprised given that AMD have released an eight core CPU their 4800H, which is competing with the 9750H and the 10750H, and that's got eight cores already. So Intel, they have to make a 10 core, or I think they're committing suicide here if they're not having a 10 core part for mobile laptops and gaming and content creation and stuff. Now, if we actually go into here and compare sort of like the benchmark scores of a typical sort of i7 9750H with the XPS 15 on the right and what looks like a GS66 Stealth from MSI, which has a 10750H, you can see that single core score is, you know, pretty much the same, but multi-core score, the 10750H is faster. Now, these may be early engineering sample so we don't know that but um what it says is the base clock's the same 2.59 versus 2.59 so what i would say is um if you're gonna get an i7 current gaming laptop or xps 15 macbook pro or something like that i think it's safe to still buy it there is that three month window i'm talking about these will be out within the next three months i expect them maybe at the end of march april at the latest sort of may so if you can wait three months sort of yeah maybe wait but if you're gonna get an i7 looking at these benchmarks now really is there that much difference yes the multi-core but i have actually seen 6000 on on i7 you know 9750 h's before anyway so it's a little disappointing they only have a six core with the i7s i was expecting an eight core but let's hope that with the i9s you can at least get a 10 core now for gaming i don't think it's really going to matter that much really it's more for content creation and stuff like that where you know the extra cores can help out but they've got to do something to compete with amd that have eight cores as their sort of like base cpu so if the i7's got six cores and you've got eight cores on amd i mean intel really yeah they have to do something now there will be tweaks to the micro architecture and you know just like comet lake comet lake are quite a lot faster than you know coffee lake or the coffee lake refresh of the ninth generation cpus with the ultrabook parts even though they look the same they sort of benchmark the same in geekbench and stuff like that there actually is quite a lot of improvements in there 
that make things faster. That may well be the case with this. I think if you can pick up a laptop now on a deal, just go ahead and buy it. I wouldn't be waiting for these 10th generation CPUs, especially if you're going to be buying an i7. I don't see any reason other than, you know, a small performance gain you'll get with the 10th generation. They may be cooler. They may be more efficient too. Who knows? They may boost higher. But one thing we do know is what they said with the 10th generation CPUs for the laptops for gaming and content creation laptops, the 45 watt parts, they said you're going to get over 5 gigahertz. So we expect that there's going to be an i9 with 5.1 gigahertz, which will be a single threaded score. And not many laptops will be able to reach that 5.1. And if they do, it'll only be for a short period. So anyway, that's my thoughts there. With the 10th generation CPUs, we know what they sort of are now. We're getting a 6 core, so yeah, if you can pick up a laptop now on a deal, go for it. If you can wait a bit longer, it's going to be within the next 3 months. So yeah, keeping you in the loop there, guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Tally ho.